We are a married couple at the start of a sailing adventure around the world. March 2020 finds us in southern Cuba, amongst the most beautiful islands that I have ever seen. It was paradise. Crystal clear waters with deserted island chains that seem to go on forever in a sea of turquoise with the most amazing golden sunsets you have ever seen. We had checked out of Cuba with about 14 days of supplies sailing for Jamaica, but we were going to take our time visiting the deserted islands of the Jardines de la Reina of southern Cuba. We were mostly blissfully unaware of the escalating COVID crisis as we sailed from island to island along the loneliest archipelago in the world. Day 16 found us here when the world shut down. We were in a bit of a tricky situation. We were on a boat, without a destination, low on food, fuel and water. Our only real course was to hide around the lonely islands of southern Cuba, catch as much seafood as possible to stretch our supplies right out and wait until the borders reopen in 15 days time. Shouldn't be too hard, so we got stuck right into it. So far so good with the fishing, but we needed fruit and veggies and water. A few days previously, we had met some friendly Cuban fishermen and had given them some money for more supplies. It was all going to be okay. We were on our way to rendezvous with them at the very end of the Jardines archipelago, but it didn't go quite as planned. On day 24, a Cuban military vessel found us. There was no talk of, do you have enough food, fuel and water? Just, you, you have to, to go now. Just getting escorted out of Cuba. Get out of the country, We're gonna escort you until you're out of uh, Cuban waters. We're drifting to Cuba. They'll be mightily impressed. We drifted back into Cuban waters. We better be careful here. I think the next step in the Cuban legal process is the bullet. But we're just gonna wait for the wind tonight. It's gonna come through in about five to seven hours and we don't have enough fuel. But the wind didn't come through at all. So here we are trying to sail in two to four knots of breeze. We had to get good at this because this was a sign of things to come. Over the next couple of days, we were aiming for Jamaica, but when we got close, Jamaica closed their borders again. So next best choice was to sail to the Dominican Republic, whose border closure was due to end in five or six days time. But then the wind really died. Drifting live. No wind, no fun. The Haitian border is only 15 mile that way and we are we are drifting and I don't want to have anything to do with Haiti and Margarita as well so and there's nothing we can do it's crazy but over the next two days we got really close where we're heading Dominican Republic has closed it for another three weeks but what I'm going to try and do is on this side, uh, on the western, southwestern side of Dominican Republic, there's this little bay that there's no development, no roads. So we're going to try and just wait out the three weeks there, or at least charge the batteries and, well, wait for some decent wind so we can actually do, because uh, it's, it's just ridiculous. What's this? This is crazy. We're actually doing four knots. Well, three and a half, but I'm rounding up. Makes me feel better. So, just got off the um, HF um, radio at, on 8104, 
and apparently the trouble is all the information I'm getting is uh, I believe it's this I believe it's that there's no one that knows exactly what's going on he says I believe everything in the Caribbean is locked down ah uh, yeah we already dropped half a knot we're probably at three knots I'm still rounding up to four people winds already started to go east south east so and it's dying we're only doing 1.8 knots but 1.8 knots is better than no knots we're going backwards drifting uh, without any sail and then the boat goes beam onto the swell and <laughs> it's just a nightmare. Every breath of wind or cloud was chased just to give us an extra knot or two just to keep us going east. It was exhausting. I can make out land over there so it must be about 15 mile away. I mean it's still 15 mile, it looks like it's dying, you know it might still be I mean, I hope it's not one more day. I just need to get in and get a fish and just relax and get some sleep. The misery ends. Um, we're still together. Oh, we're good. We've got a cape to get past. We had to come down south because I just discovered there's a town about seven miles north of where we're going to anchor. And so I didn't want to get too close. So we're going to go around and then up and sneak in. Such a relief to drop anchor. You have no idea how exhausted like, we were. you have no idea. This was not... A, uh, a fight against storm, huge waves, tempest. This was uh, this was far, far more tedious. No wind. And finally, we get to this beautiful harbour. There's no one around. There's no, there's no houses. There's no roads. There's a beautiful white beach without footprints on it. It's beautiful, clear water. It was unbelievable. I could really see ourselves you know, doing the quarantine here for three weeks and just hiding out. But the authorities were onto us. We handed them all of our cash to buy fuel and food. He said that we need to leave. We cannot enter the country. All borders are closed. No one gets in or out. And I explained to him we need to wait for a weather window to go because we're really low on fuel. We have fuel like for two, three hours and we cannot risk it, use it unless we really need it. And as soon as they come back with the diesel, we have to go on our way. Okay, Margaret is madly making some uh, meals so we can have it for the next few days. Um, we have no money. All we had sixty. What do we have? Sixty-five dollars. Yeah. Sixty-five dollars. That's all gone into fuel. Ah, if I don't know if you noticed, um, we ran out of gas too, so we're cooking on oh, yeah. the camping stove. Still haven't worked out why on high revs this motor um, overheats. We still. We don't have time, I don't have time to even pull this apart. We had purchased 80 litres of diesel, 120 litres of water and a small bag of veggies. But we still had to go right then and there. So they escorted us out. But at least there was wind. I reckon another day or two with no wind I would have gone crazy. Well, more crazy I guess. A day and a half later, we were outside Haiti, where I slowed the boat right down by heaving to, waiting for the best time to enter. I can see Haiti over there. I don't want to get in too early because they'll kick us out. I want to go in right after the officials have knocked off work, so around five. And then hopefully we'll get in and then they won't be bothered to kick us out until tomorrow. And at least we can get a good night's sleep. I made up a steering problem and put on our emergency steering. so airy, no boats, and we're coming into past this beautiful island. Apparently that's where immigration is, uh, but no one's around, no boats. Jeez, I hope we don't get in trouble. Well, what can we do? They just arrived 30 minutes ago. Uh, I started doing dinner and we explained to them that um, if we leave now we would crash the boat, we would have an accident so we need to fix the steering in order to be able to go. So 
uh, they gave us 30 minutes. Peter said, okay, I'm not able to do it in 30 minutes. So they said in two hours, you have two hours to fix it and you have to go. And this is our dilemma now. We don't know where to go and it's dark as. We have no clue what to do. If this was Australia or America or something like this, uh, it's at night. We just come through reefs and shoals to get here. I would have just said, no, I'm not leaving. I I'm, I'm not going. It's dangerous. We cannot go. Uh, we, uh, you know, maritime law, we require at least one night's rest and we need assistance. But in these countries, in Central America, South America and parts of the Caribbean, their due process is different and you don't know if they're just going to come aboard and put a gun at you or, I mean, we don't know. And I've got Margarita to think of and I'm not thinking the best anyway because I'm not sleeping and I'm thinking, shit, and you, what do you do? We, we had to go. So two hours later, we were forced to leave through the reefs and shoals. Max sailing again. We're sailing to Jamaica's South South East Islands. But that was not enough. I needed a backup plan and knowing our luck, I needed a backup of the backup of the backup plan. I scoured the charts for every reef, sandbank, pirate island or rock that we could hide behind to wait out this madness. Of course, there was a whole bunch of places of known pirate activity that would be dangerous for us. But who knows, we may be forced to go there if this crisis keeps going and we run out of water. Basically, we don't know where to we're, go. We're, we've wherever got... we go, we're the black sheep. So, and we're already, it's like, it's the 12th or third day that we're consistently sailing. And we're exhausted, not just physically, mentally, because then you don't know days. where to go. You don't have where to aim. <laughs> it's kind of laughable. It took four countries to reject us and I was finally getting the hint. We would just have to fend for ourselves. I had wanted to get into some country for Margarita's sake, but now it was going to have to be isolated reefs and islands in the middle of nowhere, rarely seen by anyone. A day and a half later we were approaching Morant Cays, a place where Jamaican fishermen stay from time to time. No one around, looks pretty deserted. No one. Everything's a wreck. Alright, you're about to hit land. That's been what? Two weeks at sea? Yeah. Excited? Besides Margarita's sanity, our priorities were to find food, get a place to cook it, since we had run out of gas and we needed to find water so we got stuck into it, not knowing how long it would be till the authorities showed up and kicked us off. We also got a message off to our adopted father, Tampa Dad in the US, to start checking where we can get entry. Hurricane season was on our doorstep and it was only a matter of time when Mother Nature would start kicking us out too. Drop all the conks they used, they took off. The other side here has left, but the other side is like a cemetery. It's all the, um, the shore full of conk. At least we know there's conk here. Well, there were conk here, but we'll go sussing that out later. Did you taste that water? No. Is it, is it grotty, the water? What's grotty? Uh, disgusting. Uh, not really, but you should go and try it. The water here was salty. Our water was further rationed from then on to about two and a quarter litres per person per day. I couldn't do anything about the water situation, but I could solve the food problem. It looked great from the air, but there was a distinct lack of fish. And then on top of all our really good luck, I had a problem with one of my ears not equalising. This was a bugger, because I wouldn't be able to go deeper than three metres. This was just getting better and better. The only choice was to go to the white water and find something there in the shallows. Look, we have a little snapper right there. Gee, I reckon that shaft bent around that rock. That's what happens when you're hungry, people. I'm gonna call it quits because of my ear. It's getting pain and I want to stress it out. I flooded it with salt water, so hopefully that'll sort itself out over the next few hours and I'll go out later or probably tomorrow. I'll give it a rest. Um, we're going to 
to cook this, so at least we got some fish. That's good actually, probably for four days for us. If, if we, because you don't need much protein. We've still got rice. We've got a couple of things of beans, and that's about it. So we'll get on the island. We'll um, we'll cook it up. Hopefully, have some meals. If they tell us to piss off, then at least we're good. I was feeling like finally I could breathe, I could start and have a rest because it was such, I was with such anxiety always having, not knowing where to go, uh, haven't been able to rest, so it's, it's just tiresome and, and then that just gets in you. We just start hearing some motor uh, engine noises and we looked out, looked out and they're boats arriving to the island. They're, they're clearly fishermen. We thought the island, it looked abandoned. So they come, they're still coming to, to fish around here. We, we don't know what to think. We're going to keep our distance because we don't want to get sick. And I'm already getting anxious again. I don't know if it's because, it must be because we're super tired. Me and Peter have been picking on each other. So we've been fighting. It's... It's just not nice. I don't think we're going to last more than Sunday. I think they're going to be going. Sun One guy said, "Oh, we're leaving Sunday." So and today is Thursday. Yeah. So until Sunday, we're good to be here. We're good to be here to relax. When they get home, probably Monday, they all might have reported. So yeah. the coast guard might come around. Whether they report it or just talk about it, we're going to be caught. And so Monday, Tuesday, they'll be out, and then we're going to have to go somewhere. So. Yeah, bugger. But we were there now and we could recharge ourselves, attend to the boat problems and get some fish because our food was a real worry and in a short while our water would be too. We have one full gas canister for the camp stove left, so we need to save it just in case, so all cooking must be done on islands like this from now on. Margarita really has a tough time at sea with being seasick all the time. I don't know how she does it. So when we're on dry land, we've got to do everything possible to get a smile back on her face. I'm pregnant with Chelsea. <laughs> There's another two big boats turned up with probably about 12 people. I mean, if they're smart, they'll say nothing about us here because the authorities will say, hang on, there's a boat, yeah. they're going to put them in quarantine and that. Yeah. So we're really stuffing up their livelihood, really. So hopefully they're smart enough to say nothing. I mean, we're de definitely not getting in contact. Mm. I mean... And we had already prepared everything there so we could make a fire. Yeah. And they arrived. Yeah. Anyway, it is their island. And we're actually very grateful that... I'm grateful that Margarita can actually uh, get on land and just not be sitting on the boat being a zombie. That's one great whopping pancake. Snorkeling along the reef edge, riding an occasional wave amongst the coral, not the safest thing to do, but a lot of fun. Anything to build morale. Who knows, we may be kicked out tomorrow and then be at sea again. What's the bread like? It's good. We're just missing something in here because it's quite um, a de dense. It's right. It's sweet bread. It's more like cake, but I'm having it with uh, last night's curry because uh, well, nothing else. Some of the Jamaican fishermen left yesterday, so we are preparing for the worst. There should be a small barracuda here. That'll be good for a day or two for us. Maybe a, a schoolmaster just behind. There's another reef over there. But you know, this is not great spearfishing here. I'm gonna have to expend a lot of energy to get very little. And then this freak wave came from a flat ocean. Only one thing for it, it's into the water and act as a drag while holding onto the front. It's all good. Bugger, that was a bit close. Uh, I'm glad I took too long to get my gear ready.
Apart from this suicidal snapper, the spearfishing was terrible. But I found some conch, so we were reprieved for another couple of days yet. Just got to keep an eye out over there, just in case the Coast Guard's coming. Now, I'm sure the fishermen wouldn't have dobbed us in, but you know, they might have just said, hey, we saw a boat and someone told someone else and, you know, the Chinese whispers grow and then there's 50 boats here, apparently. So, we're going to make, um, we've got plenty to eat. This will be like three or four meals. We'll make it up and if someone comes to Savo, we'll just go. Just go like great Russian poet, Fakhanovsky. Nothing but quality, people. And this is the most important part, to bash the hell out of them. And of course, anything that resembles skin, just get rid of it. We had found two potatoes that had fallen behind a shelf. What a find! When we have a home, do you want to have a kitchen like this? Don't you like the caveman kitchen? It burns everything. And we've got... Chips! That's plain rice for my breakfast because we run out of everything. And Margaret is making coconut rice. Save for some cooking oil, rice and a bit of flour, that was it for our supplies. We really thought we would be chased off today, so we cooked it all knowing that we would have to go out to sea again. But by sunset we seemed to have survived another day.